How you guys doing? I'm Chill the Beast, host of Alt Play, and I enjoy doing logic puzzles and strategy games and things like that. Uh, today I'm going to do a tutorial for Sudoku, or Sudoku as many people will pronounce it. There's many different ways to pronounce it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I'll be doing it with Sudoku Gridmaster, a game from the Nintendo DS. But you can follow along with these puzzles as well as use this as a tutorial for different ways to solve puzzles with any game or any book of Sudoku puzzles. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So for this first set of puzzles, I'm going to be doing an easy level set of puzzles. Uh, I haven't played Sudoku Gridmaster before. But as I said, this tutorial would more or less work for any Sudoku puzzles. Let's go ahead. All right, let's get started. Now, you can see we have two screens here on the DS. This is the top screen with the larger grid as well as a spinning star. Uh, it says easy as puzzle number one, and it's timing it. We're not worried about the time. We're not rushing to complete this. We just want to understand how to play the game. And on the bottom screen, we can see a grid as well, as well as a set of numbers. First, I'll start by explaining what this grid means. Sudoku uh, is a Japanese word or phrase, I believe. It means each number can only be used once. So, for this puzzle, we have a large set of numbers. We have numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now, the point of Sudoku is to fill this grid, this 9 by 9 grid. As you can see, there's 9 squares across. And nine squares down is a nine by nine. The point is to fill this grid with the numbers one through nine. However, in each row across, you can only use the numbers one through nine once. In each column going down, you can only use each number one through nine once. In each three by three square, that's one, two, three by one, two, three. So each one of these smaller squares, you can only use the numbers one through nine once. So basically, you'll have every number on here nine times, and no number will be in the same row, column, or three by three square here uh, more than once. So that's the puzzle. Uh, typically, there's only one way to fit it. I've seen a few puzzles where there are more than one way, which makes it a little bit trickier. But that's all. That's all a little bit too much info. Those are the rules that we're doing for this puzzle. Each number can only be used in each row, column, and three by three section once. So let's see. Uh, here on the Nintendo DS, we can see the yellow. There, there are some squares that are highlighted in yellow. Those basically it means when you're looking at this square, which is selected by the red outline. When you're looking at this square, the yellow squares, any any tiny square that's in yellow is the only thing that you have to worry about. So for this square, if we're trying to figure out what number this is, the only squares we have to worry about are the squares in this row, in this column, and in this 3x3 three three square section. All right. So the, the hardest part is probably the beginning where you're trying to figure out where to start. Where to start? Well, I already did a quick scan of this level, and I can already tell that this is a good place to start. How do I know that? Let's take a look. If we look at this square, it has an 8 in it. That means nothing in this row can be an 8. Nothing in this row. No, these two empty squares here can't be an 8. The same goes for this row because of this 8. This 8 here says that nothing in this row can be an 8. So that means this square here cannot be an 8. So already we only have two squares left. This square and this square. I'll, I'll highlight it with that so you can see it. This square and this square. Now, this square has an 8 in it, which means this one also can't be an 8. So our only option left is for this square to be an 8. There we go. We already got, we already got our first one done. We already got our first one done. All right. So let's take a look. Let us take a look. What else can we find out? Can we use these 8s to find anything else out? Hmm. Okay. So there's an 8 missing in this 3x3. Three three, and there's an 8 missing in this three by three so what we're gonna do is let's let's see about this one because we have a little bit more information oh I'm sorry there's also an eight missing in this three by three we could probably find this one as well let's see if we can find this one as well okay so there's an eight here so this square can't be an eight there's an eight here 
So this square can't be an 8. That leaves two squares. This square and this square. Um, this square also has an 8 in it. So this one can't be an 8. So there we go. We have our 8. We've already found two. We're making progress. We are making progress. Now, there are... Oh, let's see. There are two 3x3 three three sections that are missing 8s. If I had to guess, I believe this square, this 3x3 three three section, would be the easiest to find the 8. Let's take a look. We already know that if there's an 8 here, that this cannot be an 8. And if we have an 8 here, we know that this cannot have an 8. So, that means this is the only one that can have an 8. This is our 8 for this 3x3 three three section. And then that leaves the middle. The middle has absolutely nothing, so it's going to be very hard to pull clues from that. But we can do that because we have all the other 8s. We, we very likely can do it. Okay, so for this section, let's see. There's an 8 here in this column, so that means there's no 8 here. There's an 8 in this row, so that means there's no 8 here. Uh, that means we're left with these four smaller squares. There's an 8 here. So there's no 8 here, which means we're left with these two. Now, we have an 8 here in this column, which means this is our last 8. We have all the 8s in our puzzle. That's good. That's one number down. <laughs> we have 8 more to go. Okay, so let's see. What can we find? What can we find? Let's look at this. Let's try this 3x3 this three three section. Okay, so another way we can find this, we can take a look at what all is missing in a section. This uh, three by three section is missing five numbers. It's missing one, four, six, seven, and nine. One, four, six, seven, nine. It's missing five numbers. So let's see if we can find any squares within this three by three section that's that is in line with four of five of these numbers. One, four, six, seven, nine. We have a one. A four. No six. We have a seven. And all the way up here, we have a nine for this square. Let's go through those again. For this square, we have, I'm sorry, for this three by three section, we're missing one, four, six, seven, and nine. Now, this square is in line with four or five of those numbers. We have a one, a four. It's missing six. It's in line with the 7, and it's in line with the 9. So this square has to be a 6 because it's in line or in section with every other number. All right, so we, we let's do 6s. Can we focus on 6s? Okay, so we just found the 6 here. That means we know that there's no other 6 in this column. Oh, and by the way, I'm working on this section, this 3x3 three three section up here. Uh, we, found, we just found this 6, so we know that there's no other six in this column. So we know that this is not a six. We also have a six here. We have a six here. So we know that none of these are sixes. So that leaves us two squares here and here. Now, if we look over here, we have a six in this row. So that means this one cannot be a six. Our six in this section has to be up here. All right. All right. So we've got this side, the right side, the far right side of 3x3 three three sections has all their sixes. Okay. Let's see if we can find some more. Uh, this section is missing the six. Actually, this whole left 3x3 three three section, all of the 3x3 three three sections on the left side, I should say, are missing sixes, as well as the middle section, which, you know, it started out missing everything. That's okay. Um, let's see. We have our six here, which means this row cannot contain the six. We have our six here, which means this row cannot contain the six. The only six left is here in the middle of the uh, top left three by three section. That's a six. All right. Hmm. Let's see. Can we find any other sixes? I don't think we can find any other sixes at the moment. We might have to just abandon the sixes for now, and that's fine. You won't find all. You won't always find all the numbers in immediate succession. Okay, so let's move on. Let's see what else can we find. What else can we find? I believe we can find a four for this top section. 
this top left three by three. I believe we can find a four because we know that there's a four here in this section. I'm sorry, in this column, which means there's no four here. We also know that there's a four in this row. So that means there's no four here. The only place left that there can be a four is right here. That's all right. That's pretty good. We got a four there. Next, let's see what else we can find. Can we find one in this three by three section? Yes, I believe we can find a four in this three by three section. Let's take a look. There's a four here, which means you can't have four in this row. And there's a four all the way over here, which means we cannot have a four in this row. Our last four has to be here. I'm sorry, not our last four, but the four can only be in this last empty square here. Now we have an interesting situation where we have all but one number in a column. I'm going to jump off the fours for just a little bit so that we can see this now. We have all but one number in a column, so it should be pretty easy to find what number this is. Let's go in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. This has to be a seven because we have eight and nine here. All right, making progress. We're making progress. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the fours. Is it a good time to go back to the fours? Um, actually, I think we might need to jump off the fours for just a second. Let's look at this row. Now, we're missing two numbers in this row going across. Let's see if we can find what numbers they are and then figure out which one is in which space. We have one, two, three, four. We're missing five. We have six. We're missing seven. And we have eight and we have nine. Okay. So, what we have here is one of these squares is a five and the other is a seven based on the information that we know now in this column there's neither a five nor a seven so it can still be either one but in this column there is a seven which means this number this space cannot be a seven it has to be the five which would also mean that this is indeed our seven making way we are making progress uh let's see Let's see. Okay, let's look at this column. This column is now missing three spaces. We are uh, three numbers. We can do the same thing. We can see what numbers are missing and try and fill it in. We have one. Oh, we're looking just at this column. Ignore everything else right now. Looking just at this column. So we have one. We're missing two. We're missing three. Four. We're missing five. And six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So the missing numbers for this column is, I'm sorry, are two, three, and five. Okay, so in these empty spaces, one of these is a two, one of them is a three, and the other is a five. Let's see if we can figure those out using information from other rows, columns, and sections. Let's start at the bottom. Uh, this is either a two, a three, or a five. Well, we know it can't be a two because in this section, in this three by three section, we have a two already. So this square can't be a two. Also in this row, we have a five already. So we know that this can't be a five. This space has to be the missing three for this column. All right. Now that leaves us with two and five. So one of these spaces, one of these two spaces is a two and the other is a five. Well, we know that this one can't be one of them because in this row, we have a two already. So this one has to be the five, which means this one is the two. All right, we're making way, we're making, we're making our progress. We are making progress. Hmm, we're somewhere fun we can go. Let's do this row across, excuse me. Let's do this row across. It's missing three numbers. Let's find those numbers. This row across is what we're focusing on. Let's go one, two, we're missing three, four, five. We're missing five, and we're missing six. And that's all we're missing because we have seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so this row across is missing three, five, and six. Let's figure it out. We can figure it out. I'm sure we can do it. All right. So in these empty spaces is three, five, and six. Uh... We know this one. We can find this one because in this column, we have both five and six. So this space can't be either one of those. This space would have to be three. That would mean that one of these spaces is five and the other. One of these spaces is five and the other is six. 
Well, we know this one can't be five because in this three by three section, we already have a five. So this one would have to be six, which leaves this last number in this row being a five. Making progress. We're making progress. Let's do this column. Let's do this column. We'll try and have everything we do branch off of the last number that we find. So it flows. Okay, this column, empty space. Uh, I'll give you guys a second to look at it before I go ahead and walk you through it. What numbers are missing from this column up and down? What numbers are missing from this column? All right, in this column, we are missing one. We're missing the two, three, four, five, six, and we're missing the seven. We also have eight and nine. Okay. So in this column, we have to put the two and the seven. Those are the only numbers missing from this column. I'll give you guys a second to also figure out which number goes in which space. We have this space and this space. We're missing the two and the seven. Which numbers go in which space? Go ahead and figure it out for yourself. Okay, so if we take a look in this column, this column here, if we take a look, we can see that we're missing the two and the seven. Well, we know which one this one can't be, which number this one, this square can't be, because we have a seven in this three by three section, which means this one can't be seven. So this square has to be the number two, which would then leave this square here to be the number seven. All right, not bad at all. Not bad at all. We can find this one because we found every other, we can find this square, I should say, because we found every other number in this row. The square has to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. All right, so then we can also find this same three by three, this three by three here, the same way. What do you guys think it is? What do you think it is? It would have to be one, two, three, four, five. That's five. Okay. Let's go back up to the top. I'm, I feel like we can find this one now. Can we find this, these two missing numbers now? Actually, I don't think we can. Not, not just looking at it. Hmm. Actually, I'm sorry. We can. We can find the, these two missing numbers just looking at it. I want to see if you guys know which which number goes where. What numbers are missing, and which number goes where? All right. Okay. So this. Three by three section has, I'm sorry, it's missing the numbers one, two, and three. It's missing the numbers two and three. We have four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so then that would mean one of these squares is a two and the other square is a three. Which one's which? Which one's which? Well, if we take a look, we can see that we already have a three in this row. So that means this square can't be the three, it has to be the two which will leave this square being the three. Not bad, not bad at all. We can look at this, this three by three section here. It is missing what numbers? It's missing two and six. Okay, so one of these squares is a two and the other square is a six. We know that this square can't be a two because we already have a two here. So this square would have to be six, leaving this square to be two. All right, let's look at this row. Let's look at this row here. Rows go across. Uh, this row, we have one, two, three. We're missing four. We have five, six, seven, and eight. We're missing nine. Okay, so one of these squares is a four, and the other square is a nine. But we know that this square can't be four because this column already has a four in it. Which means this column, I'm sorry, this square has a nine. Which means the other one right beside it has to be the other four or the missing four. We can look at this column and find out what number is this one? What number is missing? Number one is missing. We have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this one has to be the one. And now we can find the middle section. I said the middle section was missing the most. And we finished the middle section before we finished some of the easy ones. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Has to be the seven. All right. Not bad. Oh, let's see. Let's go back over here. Let's look at the top right three by three section. 
And we'll start with this row specifically. This row has, I'm sorry, it has two empty squares. It is missing one, two, three, four. It's missing five and six. It's missing seven. Okay, so one of these squares has to be the five for this three by three section, and the other one has to be the seven. Which is interesting. Let's let's before we solve that, I want to look at this. This three by three section is missing three numbers. We just said that one of these squares in this bottom row of the three by three section has to be the five and the other has to be the seven. If we use those, if we think about those two numbers and we think about what other number is missing from this three by three section, we can find the number that goes in the very top right corner. Okay, so we say that one of these has to be a five and the other has to be a seven. If we go ahead and count, we uh, pretend that the five and the seven already filled in. What other number is missing? We have one, we're missing the two. And we have three, four, we said we'll pretend that the five is already filled in, it has to be one of these two. Six, and the seven has to be the other one of these two, it can't be any other way. Here's eight and nine, that would mean that this square here is the two. That's how you find information without filling in information. Imagine if we didn't have anything else, but we knew that these two had to be five and seven. That's how we would figure it out. Okay, so let's go back to the, the baseline, the lower level of this logic puzzle. One, two, three, four. We said one of these has to be a five, six. The other has to be seven, eight, and nine. Now, we know that this square can't be a five because we already have a five in this square. So we would go ahead and plug in the seven here. And then that would leave this square being the five. Making progress. And it all makes sense. It all makes sense. All the bit of logic that we've done with this makes sense. Okay. Let's fly through the rest of these. Okay. So this row, let's take a look at, I'm sorry. I want to know about this square or, or this column. Let's not do it like that. Let's do this column. Uh, we're missing what numbers? We're missing three numbers. We're missing one, two. We're missing three, and we're missing four. We have five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so we're missing one, three, and four. Now, we know that this square can't be a one because it already has a one in this row. And we know that this square can't be a one because it already has a one in this row. That will leave this square being the one for this column. Now the other numbers are three and four. This square can be anything because there's no three or four in any of the row, the column, or the three by three section for it. So it could be either the three or the four. But we know that this one can't be the three because we already have a three in this row. That will leave this number being the four, which means this number then has to be the three. We can also find this one because we have one, two, three, and we're missing the four for this this uh, three by three section in this row. We have five, six, oops, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this one here has to be the four. Now let's see. Uh, let's look at this column. I'm gonna look at this column here. This column we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're missing seven. We have eight and we're missing nine. So that means this square has to be a seven or a nine. And then this square has to be a 7 or a 9. We know that this one can't be a 7 because we already have a 7 in this row. Which would mean that this one is the 9 following this one to be the 7. Bam. We're doing good. I don't think we made a single mistake so far. And we have 6 squares left. Let's see how quickly we can get these 6 squares done. Okay, let's look at this square. Specifically this square. We In, in everything that interacts with this square, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight. This one would have to be nine. Because there's no not I'm sorry, every other number in every three by three square um, column and row that interacts with this square has every other number. Okay. Uh, next, let's look at this one. I think we can find this one. Oh, yeah, we should be able to because we have every other number in the row with this. Let's take a look. We have for this square, we have one. Two, three, four, five, six, because we have seven, eight, and nine. So this is six. All right. 
Numbers missing, numbers missing, numbers missing. Let's go for this one. How about we go here? Okay, so we're looking at the column. We're looking at the row. And we're looking at the three by three square for this number. What number um, for the square? What number goes in the square? We have one, two. We don't have three. Four. We don't have five. We have six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so this is either a three or a five. And the same thing would go for this square because it follows the same protocols. Uh, I'm sorry, not exactly. One of these squares, I'm sorry, the, the square in this column has a three, so it can't be the three here. This one would have to be the five, which would mean that this one is the three. All right, now we're in the last two squares. We're probably gonna find both of these at the same time. Actually, we can find them one by one because they're the last numbers missing in their column. Let's find the top left. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Bam. All right, and that would mean this number can only be one thing if we've done everything right so far. We have, we're looking at it for all of them, for the three by three, the column, Oh, the column and the row. Let's look at the three by three first. We have one, two, three, four. This would have to be five because we have six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, let's see if that checks. Look at the column next. For this column, we have one, two, three, four. This would have to be five because we have six, seven, eight, and nine. And now the final check will look at the row. For the row, we have one, two, three, four. This is a five because we have six, seven, eight, and nine. Bam. All right. So we solved it. We solved it. It took us 25 minutes for the tutorial, but we solved it. Uh, like I said, I'm not worried about completing this within a certain amount of time. This is a tutorial. This is for us to understand how to do pie cross for us to learn different strategies. Um, so I'm not really, um, don't worry about time. It takes, everyone learns this at their own level. It's not a rush. It's not a rush. It's not a race or any of that. All right. I'll have more tutorials for uh, Sudoku. It's one of my favorite puzzles to do. I like to do it to calm down. Uh, calm down, relax, chill out, listen to, to podcasts and such. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this and would love to see more tutorials, then all you have to do is hit that red button below this video. Uh, the subscribe button. That way I can bring you guys more tutorials as well as a lot of other games that we play. I consider this as a game. This is a, this is a fun puzzle to solve. I'll catch you guys later with more here on Alt Play.